Hey folks, Justin here with Movo. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 49 inch motorized slider with wireless remote from Movo. Um, as you can see it's a pretty decent size uh, case. I mean after all it's a 49 inch slider but despite the size of the case and the size of the slider it is fairly lightweight. Uh, the case here even comes with a padded shoulder strap, a padded carrying handle. Uh, most people aren't going to have any issues at all transporting this thing around. Um, let's go ahead and take a look inside see what the slider comes with. We'll do a quick setup and overview of how to use it and then I'll show you a few test shots of what you might be able to get using this slider with your camera. All right, first up we have a little bag here. It comes with a manual, um, an instructional video, as well as a few tools that you'll need just to make a few last minute adjustments um, for your slider. Next up we have the power cord and power adapter. And here we have a little bag. Inside this bag we have some wires and adapters, some screws, a few other things that we'll use in just a moment to finish setting up the slider as well as hooking up our camera to the slider. And here's the wireless remote. This is what we're actually going to use to control the time-lapse function as well as the motion of the slider. Here is the motor and control box for the slider. Um, it's already assembled and ready to go. All we need to do is attach this to the rest of the slider and we'll be all set. All right, and here's the body of the slider. All we need to do now is hook up that control box and motor as well as a few wires, and we'll be ready to start capturing some great footage. Let's go ahead and flip these legs down. What's great about the legs is you can adjust their height. That way, if you need to make any precise leveling adjustments, um, you can easily do that. There are four legs, two on each side, um, and each of those you are able to adjust the levels. Attaching the motor to the slider is really easy. We're just going to use these six screws here as well as the hex tool that also comes included. Once we flip everything over, simply just line up the holes right there. Um, there are two longer screws and four shorter ones. The two longer go farther down towards the slider side, whereas the four smaller ones attach um, right on the larger gearbox. Uh, put those in there. Now, as we are tightening these down, I don't want to tighten them too much because we will need to attach the belt here in just a moment. Um, if these legs get in your way, just loosen them up a little bit and fold them away. It'll make it a lot easier so you don't keep catching your tool on them. Uh, and then we can put those back when we are ready to rotate things around. All right, that's the last screw. Um, I'll flip this over so you can see me attach the belt on here. Um, simply slide the belt over both sides. Um, if you find that it's too tight, all you need to adjust is the frame that's attaching the motor to the slider. If you adjust back and forth a little bit, it'll make it easier. Uh, you may need to use that tool and loosen some of the screws up if you've made them too tight. Once you get it on here, um, just flip it back over and you want to stretch stretch that, that belt out. Um, not too much, just so it has a nice snug fit. And then we're going to tighten those all down again and then we will be ready to go. Next, take this stretchy looking wire right here and we're going to attach this into the mounting plate on one side um, and then we'll screw this down that way it doesn't come out. Then we're going to take the other end and attach it all the way down here on the box and the same as before. We'll tighten that down and we'll be ready to attach the next wire. Next, we're going to take this wire here and attach the motor to the control box. And same as before, make sure we tighten everything down. We don't want any of those wires popping out while we're trying to record and capture our footage. Now to attach the antennas, pretty simple. We have one that will attach right here on the remote. Just screw that down. Um, and it does move around if it gets in your way while you're trying to um, record or use it, which is really nice. So you do have that. Uh, then you're going to take the second antenna and that will attach all the way down here on the control box. To use my camera with the slider, I'm going to go ahead and use this ball head right here. Um, you can use your favorite ball head or adapter, whatever it is that you want to use um, to attach right onto the mounting plate. Screw it right on there. Um, that way I can get it to the angle that I want. Uh, but feel free to use whatever adapter um, you like with your own camera.
The last wire that we need to attach depends on the camera that you're using. Um, here I have a Canon, so I don't need these guys right here. I'm gonna use this wire, um, and I really only need to use this for the time-lapse function. Um, if I'm just using it for video, I really don't even have to use this. Um, but once I plug this in, I will be able to use the remote control here to control my camera's shutter, which is gonna be really awesome and help me get some fantastic time lapse. So simply plug one in here and then one end wherever your camera's remote cord would plug into. For me, that's gonna be right here on the Canon. Then I'll plug this end down right here and we will be ready to go. Right now, Right now I'm at live motion manual mode. What that means is by using this joystick right here, I can control the movement of my camera left or right on the slider. Uh, really convenient because it doesn't take much. I don't even really have to look at it. I can just go to the left or to the right and I know that it's gonna be moving super smooth um, without even having a camera operator there, which is really nice. If I do want a little bit more freedom, however, though, I can switch it to auto and it will move on its own. Um, right now I have it on a speed of five. I could change it all the way down to one, which is a super slow crawl, or I can speed it all the way up to a nine, um, which is pretty fast. Now to switch to time-lapse mode, it's pretty simple. Um, just here on the remote, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Um, and by the way, these buttons are super easy to use, very responsive. Um, once I'm in the time-lapse mode, I can select time-lapse mode one or time-lapse mode two. I'm gonna go with time-lapse mode one, um, where I can adjust the spacing distance, interval time, and the run distance. Spacing distance means how much is it going to move on the slider in between pictures. Uh, on the slider itself, there is a ruler down here so you can see very precisely how far things are moving. Uh, but what's nice about time lapse is I don't even have to worry about that when I'm using it um, with time lapse mode one. It's going to move at precisely the millimeters that I set it to. Right now it's set to one millimeter, um, spacing distance, interval time of two seconds, meaning every two seconds it'll take a photo and they will be one millimeter apart and a total run distance of 200 millimeters. Um, I can change that if I wanted to make it shorter or longer. I wanna have more spacing in between or more time in between photos. It's super easy to do on the remote. Um, right now we'll go ahead and start it. Um, so that you can see, I wanna go ahead and flip my screen on my Canon 70D around and you can kind of see the camera moving and what it, what's happening um, while in time-lapse function. So go ahead and hit start and it just took the first picture. Now what it's going to do is it's gonna move down the rail and then it's gonna take another photo. And then it'll move another nine millimeters and take another photo and so on and so forth. Um, and by dialing these settings in and playing around, making it exactly what you want, uh, you're gonna be able to capture some really cool stuff. Um, the, the possibilities on this are really endless. Uh, enough talking about it and showing you guys how it works. I want to show you some footage that I capture now um, using my Canon 70D with Movo's 49 inch motorized slider with wireless remote. And there you have it, the 49 inch motorized slider with wireless remote from Movo. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. We love hearing from you guys here at Movo. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.